I've been working on this little hollow form and it's almost completed. I've got the finish and the color all done on this. I just need to take off the little nub. This video, I'm going to do a lid for this that's not going to be threaded. I've done a lot of thread chasing, but today I'm going to simply make a lid that sits in the opening. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. I don't ordinarily do this. I've done very few of those, but I've got a little 45 degree chamfer in the opening. And let me show you what I do in making a lid for this. All right, I am in the process of making a lid for my little tiny hollow form. Okay, size does not matter. Now, wood selection. I have a piece of walnut right here. And this is a piece of mahogany, so just some cheap, um, probably African mahogany. And both are okay for this. Um, they're much too large uh, for this project, but that's okay. I can cut those down. Now, let me take these down to round. Now, I think the um, little bit of mahogany might be a better choice because it's straight grained, it's uh, not real hard. The walnut has some sapwood, which may disappear once I turn that around. So anyway, let me, uh, let me turn these down to round and we'll take a look at them. All right, now I'm gonna decide which one of these pieces of wood to use. The walnut is fairly pretty and I kind of hesitate to uh, use it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ebonize that lid all right plus uh, Kind of leaning towards the mahogany because the walnut has some splits in it and what I have here is a solution of vinegar and Nails and screws and some steel wool anything that will rust and to me this is a very good way to ebonize a piece of wood that you're working on. All right, and I put this together four or five days ago. If you do this, this does have a shelf life. It's not gonna last forever, maybe a couple months or something. It kind of loses its potency. Now, I'm gonna just take a little plumber's acid brush, put some on here, and see how well that reacts. Just give that a second. Put a little bit on my, my walnut. Now this works really well with oak. And oak has a lot of tannic acid in it. But I find that lots and lots of wood will react to this solution. You see how dark that's getting? And if I put three or four applications on that, um, it's going to ebonize very nicely. So here's my mahogany. I'll put some more on there. But you get the idea. And this works really well. My definition of ebonizing is to turn the wood black but also have some of the grain showing through. I'm not painting this. I could paint it with some acrylic paint or something or airbrush it, but I want that grain to show through. Now, I almost think this walnut is reacting better than the mahogany, but uh, let's, let's forge ahead and see. Maybe I'll just turn two lids. All right, now I think I've decided on the piece of mahogany. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this uh, to a large extent in a jam chuck. So this will be the area that will go into the vessel. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is mark that size on my calipers. Mark this opening. And what I'm doing is I'm um, well, I'm copying a video from Cindy Drozda, who does this. I 
and she is the master. So let's uh, let me bring up my my tool rest. Now I'm going to really take off a lot of this wood. Let me, let me first of all mark this opening on the end of this piece of wood. All right. I'm going to take a pencil and, and highlight that. So I have to decide on two basic dimensions. How tall this is going to be in relation to my little hollow form and how big in diameter this way it's going to be. All right, I'm going to start with a English bedan. and take this down to my pencil line. Got a little bit of a taper on that, so let's just see. Okay. Can kind of see where I need to cut down, so let me do a little bit more on this. Okay, that's still too tight. And I'm making a little rub mark on there with my vessel held up there to just uh, fine tune the dimension of that, the, the diameter. So a little bit more. Okay, I've readjusted my camera. I think you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Now, at the very opening of this, I've got a chamfer. It's a 45 degree taper on that. And this dimension down here right now fits fairly well with that tenon I've made. I need to go down a little bit farther. And then I'm going to turn this down to that 45 degree taper that will match this opening in my vessel. close to where I want to be. I don't want this connection to be at all tight. Okay, and that's probably a good spot to stop right now. I can, I can adjust that later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller spindle gouge and create a chamfer right here. Now eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse this and this is going to be uh, chucked up into a block of wood as a jam chuck. All right, what I have here, one of my favorite tools, this is actually a, a robust uh, spindle gouge, three-eighths of an inch. And I'm going to just uh, work this area down here to match the uh, recess in my vessel.
Now I took a little bit of that diameter out of there with a larger tool. I'm turning right at 1800 RPM. And this is still much too large, but we'll adjust that as we go along. Okay, let's see how this fits. All right, my, my tenon down here is still too large. Okay, it won't go on far enough to hit this chamfer. So let me take a little bit more of that off, fine tune this. I think I'm very, very close. I can, I can feel just a little bit of a, um, a friction on that. Not much, it's not gonna stay on. Well, right there. Keep in mind, this is gonna sit inside my vessel and just gravity is gonna hold it in place. So I like that, I think that's a, a good fit so far. I'm gonna take this out of here so we can take a little bit closer look at um, how we're going to profile this. And I am going to mark my, my jaws right here. All right, now to help me with my design, I'm going to use my golden mean calipers and this is that uh, 1 to 1.6 ratio. So if I open these up to my bigger dimension right here and put that on the base right there, the smaller dimension might be the height of my, my finial and my handle. Okay, now I'm going to mark that right about here. My vessel from the opening to the base is right at three and a quarter inches. So you could figure that out mathematically. I really think that is still too tall. I don't want to cut too much of it off, so I'll put that back in there and probably go down to this point here. Plus, the diameter needs to be reduced quite a bit here. Got a big hunk of wood there, and we'll, we'll have to kind of fine tune that as we go along. So let me put that back in my chuck jaws. All right, now, I think everything down here is okay. All right, now while I'm working on this end, I'm gonna take my small spindle gouge, and I'm gonna finish this off right here, because I won't have another chance. So I'm going to sand this down to 600 grit. Now keep in mind that this is going to be taken down somewhere in here to match the opening on my hollow form. So I got a lot of wood there to take off. I got some 600 grit sandpaper I'll finish this up with. I'm 
going to take my rusty solution and put a coat on here while I'm exposed on this end. Let's put a good heavy coat on that. And after I'm all done, I'll probably put on four or five applications of this just to make sure it's uh, nice and black. And that's a good start. What happens, this is a chemical reaction. And after a few seconds, it starts turning dark. All right. Okay, now the next thing I need to do while I'm here, I'm going to part this off. So I'll find a small narrow parting tool. And here's my mark right here that I made before. I'm not going to get too I'm not going to take off too much wood there. I don't want to make it too small. All right, I'm preparing my jam chuck from this waste block that came from my lid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a corresponding profile that will match this parallel sided tenon and also this chamfer. And I had that dimension marked on my calipers and I'm just working my way down and I'm using a box scraper. So I want to check this before I get too, too far along. Oh, that's almost perfect the way it is right there. Okay. Now you might hear my air conditioner back there. It is really hot outside, so you'll have to bear with me. All right, let me bring you up to speed. I've got my, my jam chuck completed. It's a pretty good fit. Now, I do not intend to use this without the tail stock support. So I'm going to bring that up, do a little bit of work on it, take some of that diameter down. All right. Now, I've also made a mark with this lid sitting in my vessel. And I'm going to make a mark on here. That will be the biggest diameter going into the vessel. It'll sit right on top. Can't see it very well right now, but I'm going to take a lot of that wood off and I'll start shaping my handle. Okay, I had to take my lid out of there just to see where I'm at. With this dimension right here, I had marked on my pencil. Okay, and I can see I need to take it down just a little bit farther. This lid, and that'll help me get that centered back up. All right.
right, I did a little bit of figuring off camera with my calculator, and I think I'm right in the ballpark for the height of my, my lid. And it's not exactly a finial. It's gonna be maybe more of a handle. So anyway, let me do a little bit more work. Now the nice thing about this fixing is I can simply take that out of there, put it into my vessel and see how it looks. All right. All right, I'm working my way up towards the tip of my handle. I'm gonna apply a little bit more of my solution on here to ebonize that. And if this is not dark enough later on, I can always add some um, leather dye, which is really black. All right, now, I'm going to do one more thing and I'm going to work my way up to the tip of this. So I got some masking tape and I'm going to tape this part onto my chuck jaws and I can work on the other then I can work on the top of my handle without the tail center in place. All right, I've wrapped some duct tape around the very top of the base of my handle. Put a little bit more tape around the entire um, jam chuck. And having this tape on there doesn't mean it won't come loose, but it won't fly across the room. And I learned that from Cindy. Now I'm gonna do as much work as I can with my tail center support, just to be safe. I'm going to change my tool rest to this cute little tool rest. Yeah, it'll get right in there. All right.
All right, I think I'm very close. It's a little different, but it's more of a handle than a finial. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding on that and ebonize it, and we'll see how it looks in the vessel. All right, now I have the shaping of my handle completed, and I'm gonna finish it off, put a finish on here, and I'm gonna start by stabilizing this with some CA glue. So I'm gonna put this lightly into some pin jaws. Now I'm gonna take some 600 grit sandpaper and just lightly go over this. Now I'm not completely happy with uh, my ebonizing on this, so I'm going to take some leather dye that I get from uh, Tandy Leather, and it is a really, really nice product. And I'm going to just take this acid brush and coat the surface. Let that soak in for 30 seconds or so. All right, let's wipe this down. Now I'm gonna let this dry. Wipe this down a little bit. Take the excess of that dye off there. Let it dry and then I'm gonna spray it with a lacquer. This particular Leather dye is alcohol based. All right, now what I've done with my finish is I've used some deft clear lacquer. And I put a very, very light coat on there. I don't wanna gunk this thing up at all. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of, uh, get this in the shot here. This is Axe Polishing Paste, Tom Ackley. Good product, and you'll probably see more of this from me in the future. I just got my shipment, and I want to try it out. So thank you, Tom and Annette, for putting out a really, really good product. Made in America. All right, let's... Uh, Put a little bit of this uh, polishing paste on here. Put a little bit of this on here and we'll just take a look at the finished product. Now I'm gonna kinda turn my lathe speed up a little bit and buff that in. Let's put that in the vessel and see what it looks like. All right, there is my finished hollow form with the completed lid. And I'm very happy with that. I think that turned out really nice. But I'm very happy overall. I think the uh, shape of that handle is, is okay. And I'm very happy with the coloring on my, my hollow form. 
It's a little piece of box elder burl. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and uh, I will talk to you next time. Thank you very much.